Sophie. I know we've been friends over the past year, uh, but I just wanted to do this interview with you because I know that obviously you've got to know each other and work with. So I just wanted to ask you a few questions about it. If you feel uncomfortable at any point, let me know when we can start. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Can I say your full name, please? Sophie Cummins. And how old are you, Sophie? I'm 18. Uh, what is your occupation? I'm a student at Salford University. Okay. And what are your hobbies? Um, dancing, running, and these kind of sports. And what is your official diagnosis? Um, I've got rheumatoid juvenile arthritis. And how old were you when you were first diagnosed? I was 12. Okay. And what's the course of your arthritis so far? Um, at the minute it's okay, but I do get quite big flare-ups when it does flare up. Okay. And how often do you flare-ups? Um, at the minute it's probably every couple of months. Right. Okay. And how does it affect your everyday life? Um, when I have a flare up, it can affect almost everything from not being able to walk, mm. um, not being able to get out of bed in the morning, or not even being able to get into bed at night. Um, just little things that you can do on every other day. Yeah. And how long do you flare ups usually last? Um, it can range between a couple of hours to nearly two weeks. Okay. And what medication are you on for it? Um, I'm on something called a Teneseft. Okay, and how do you take that medication? Um, it's an injection twice a week. Okay. And does it have any side effects at all? Um, not as many as other medications, just fatigue and dizziness sometimes. Okay. Um, can you tell me what it's like to be a young woman living with arthritis? Um, there's, it's not too bad. Um, it's obviously a disease that not many people notice, so coming across other people, they don't really know I've got it until I, it's mentioned or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it can sometimes affect my social life. Okay. So if I've got a flare up and my friends are asking whether I want to go out, I have to sort of turn it down and miss big nights out or whatever just due to not being able to drink as much while I'm on the medication. Right, okay. Can you just tell me what, in your opinion, what you think makes a good clinician? Um, Listening. Listening is the main thing. Listening to me and how I'm feeling. Mm. Um, just being understanding as well, because obviously only being young, mm. people just sort of pass it over and just say, yeah, okay, we know what it's like. They just sort of got a set thing of what they expect, but it's not always just that way. Yeah. Um, just them sort of things, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. What do you think makes a bad, bad clinician? Um, telling you how they think it should be so or if I feel like I'm not able to move but they're telling me that there's no signs of any flare-up but I know in myself that it's it's about to come on and I can feel it in myself and they're telling me no it's not there mm. so sort of the opposite really not listening to what I'm saying yeah Um, not just not understanding what I'm trying to put forward sort of thing yeah I can understand that very really frustrating for you yeah. um, what is your overall experience being like with the NHS um, up to now it's been very positive, um, especially when I was at the um, Old Hay Children's Hospital. It was always very good though. Were you there when you were 12? Yeah, 12 until the past year really, until I turned 18. And what are the key mistakes clinicians make in your opinion when they're trying to treat or assess you? Um, maybe trying to push me a bit too far, so if I've got stiffness in my hand and they're trying to stretch my fingers a little bit too much. Yeah. The pain can make me feel really uneasy and a bit dizzy and it has actually caused me to faint in the past um, when a physio has been playing with my wrist. So yeah, just pushing the boundaries a bit too far. Okay. Um, can you tell me how much of managing your health is down to you or down to the doctors? Um, I, are you left to your own devices or do you get a lot of support? I'd probably say I get as much support as I want, but I don't always want it. Okay. Um, independent. Yeah. Okay. And if if I rang up the hospital and said I'd like an appointment as soon as possible, they'd get it within a week. Hmm. Um, I'd be seeing my nurse, I'd be seeing my doctor. Um, but it's very rare that I do that. I just stick to the appointments that I'm given. Okay. And... But when I go in and say that I had this flare up a couple of months ago, they'll try and work for it to try and stop it coming as bad or different things like that. But yeah. So you do feel that you've got those problems? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Good. Um, 
Have you ever been frustrated with yoga? Um, yeah. When I was first diagnosed, um, I was taken to a GP at first and they told me it was um, growing pains okay. um, and I had growing pains for six months until I was actually diagnosed with arthritis right, okay. um, so that was a very frustrating time for not just me but my family as well yeah. seeing me not being able to walk and being told it was just growing pains yeah, so yeah what would you like to teach future doctors about communication um, probably just to be yourself um, it's a lot easier to talk to someone um, when, not that they're being nice, but they're being just another human being sort yeah. of thing, rather than someone bigger than you or someone who knows more than you sort of thing. Somebody talking on your level. Yeah. yeah. Um, how important have you found good communication as a patient? Have you had any negative experience? For example, has anybody ever spoken down to you and not treated you as a patient? Um, there was one incident, yeah, um, when um, my mum actually had to complain about the doctor. Okay. Um, I was only young and she was treating me as if I was a child that was just complaining far too much. Um, and that just, it was, it's always stuck with me that that's, that's sort of my vision of doctors until I got my nicer doctor and yeah. sort of changed the way I look at them sort of thing. What was the difference between the two clinicians? Um, the not so good one was more, she'd always um, sit quite far away from me and speak down at me as if to say there's nothing wrong with you, you look mm. fine. Um, whereas the other doctor would sit practically next to me and just speak to me as if it was just my friend, but he'd also be taking notes obviously as he yeah. needs to do, which I just found a lot more comforting. And, able to open up to him a little bit more and tell him how I actually feel. Yeah, that's brilliant, thank you. Do you feel that like you've been managed by a team of consistency or has your care been less organised? Um, no, it's always been very organised. Um, the, um, the way that they always communicated with each other, um, so my appointments never mixed. There was, I was always left a couple of, um, couple of hours between each appointment to let me sort of calm down, so if I'd been with the physio, mm -hmm. they then wouldn't send me to the doctor because I'd have more pain from being with the physio anyway. Um, so it was always good in that sense, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time, so I really appreciate it. It's alright. Thank you.